Hello, juniors. This is the information you need to know for Wednesday, September 8th. Pause the screen, pause the video at any time. You need to slow down for more information. So there is a binder check coming next week. Make sure you have completed springboard page 11, questions 1, 2, and 3, that you've written in complete sentences. And it's in the literature section. Make sure on pages 8, 9, and 10, you've answered both questions. Question number one on each of those three pages, you should have five details listed. In the literature section, you need to place your American dream sketch. Vocabulary cards must be bound, not with the paper clip. So vocabulary check number two, excuse me, binder check number two, it includes your vocabulary cards being bound. If they are not bound, your, vocab your binder check will be incomplete. In the vocabulary section of your binder, I should see word boxes for allusion and juxtaposition. Okay, the very first page in the vocabulary section should be titled Literary Terms Template. So in the vocabulary section of your binder, when I move that divider, the first page should say Literary Terms Template. Copy this template. Then the second page, page two in the vocabulary section of your binder, you want to create two charts like this, two word boxes, and illusion and juxtaposition are the two words. So page one says literary terms template, and you copy this template. Page two, you'll have two word boxes. One of them will say illusion, definition of illusion. This is blank. The second word box, juxtaposition, definition. This is blank. Pause the video so that you can copy these and make sure your binder is ready. So in class, we also learned about the gist. When you begin to read a, an academic text, Preview the text by reading and highlighting the very first sentence of each paragraph. We practice this with chunk one on page 15 of Springboard. Chunk one, page 15 of Springboard. We highlighted the first sentence of all of chunk one. If you want to be current with the classwork, open to page 15 and highlight, it's the story America and I, highlight the first sentence of each paragraph. Some sentences, some paragraphs might be all one sentence. That's fine. You're able to take a look at somebody's desk in your table to help you see what the finished product looks like. We then wrote a gist. So on a clean sheet of paper, copy this gist. Chunk one is mainly about the author expressing her excitement and hope for fleeing Russia to begin a new life in America. Copy this gist on a new sheet of paper. Remember, a gist just means a preview. It is a, it's like a movie trailer. Copy this sentence on a clean sheet of paper. Keep this sheet of paper in the literature section of your binder. Chunk one is mainly about the author expressing her excitement and hope for fleeing Russia to begin a new life in America. So we spent about 15 minutes talking about the gist, and then we returned to discuss the essay writing notes. I'm about to provide notes that you're able to take by listening to the following lecture, which there are no screen, no visual to see, I don't have any slides for it, so you'll just have to listen. Speed this video up accordingly. By the time you finish listening to this lecture, if I were to ask you to write a paper, a process paper where you explain how to write a, an essay, how do you write a successful essay? You want to make sure you're able to do it. So here's the goal. I'm going to go ahead and begin writing a successful paper takes place in three parts. One, getting started. When you start writing an essay, you want to make sure you have, you look at the prompt and you, you write a thesis. You must have a plan sheet. Do not write an essay 
without a plan sheet. So you have a planning sheet. On your planning sheet, you include the thesis. That's your response to the prompt. You include the thesis. Your thesis must include a why clause. Why? So whatever the prompt, include the why. What's your why? That must be included in the thesis. Also on your planning, we're still, we're still planning. We haven't started writing the paper. Also on the planning sheet that's required, Ms. Hightower will not read any papers that you write if you have not included a planning sheet. So on the planning sheet, you write the thesis with a because clause. You, you bullet your ideas for evidence. What evidence do you think you are going to use? If this is the FSA, you make sure you use the articles they have provided. Okay. If it's, you don't have any articles to reference, you can tell a current event story, historical story. You can discuss uh, something in the news or sports story, a science story, anything to support your view. You also, if it is persuasive, you want to acknowledge the opposing view, counterclaim. You need to make a plan. How are you going to address the opposing view? Okay. All right. So once you have your plan, that is everything for getting started. The thesis with the because clause, you, you bullet your ideas for evidence. What evidence am I going to use and how am I going to address the counterclaim? Now it's time to draft. During your draft, you, the draft happens in two phases. Phase one, you're focused on simply expanding on your evidence. You have to explain your evidence. So indent your paragraphs. You must have an intro, a body, and a conclusion. All successful papers have an intro, a body, and a conclusion. You cannot write one paragraph and consider a successful paper. You must have an intro, a body, and a conclusion. Okay, so now that you have an intro, for the draft, you just need to write the thesis. Just for the draft, phase one. We're going to come back and, and expand on the introduction, but right now your main focus, your first focus of this draft, write the thesis, just one sentence for paragraph one, one sentence, paragraph one, then you write your body, in your body. And remember, you're using transitions effectively. In your body, you want to make sure you include your evidence and you explain it. Evidence, explain. Evidence, explain. So how do you explain? You first tell, what does this evidence say? What does it mean? Why is it important? Every time you introduce a piece of evidence, your explanation must be thorough. Okay, so you want to make sure you have a thorough explanation. Now, once you have a thorough explanation, you must have a paragraph dedicated to the opposing view. Acknowledge the opposing view. You're acknowledging the opposing view to show the reader you're not biased that you know how to acknowledge the other team may have a valid point. The counterclaim, it could be a valid point. However, your point is stronger because, and here's why my point is stronger. They have a, that's a, I acknowledge you have a valid point. My point is stronger and here's why. That is your draft. You have a conclusion. You know, you close the paper. Now, phase two of drafting we need to develop the introduction and the conclusion. Don't worry about that before. You need to do it now. So let's go back to the introduction. Remember, you only wrote one sentence, just the thesis. So now we want to go back. And when you go back to the intro, the intro has three parts. The intro has three parts. Hook, link, thesis. Hook, link, thesis. How do you begin a conclusion? So let's say you grab the reader's attention in your introduction with the story. Open with your conclusion with the story. Let's say you grab the reader's attention with the statistic. Open the conclusion with a statistic. Let's say you open the grab the reader's attention with a shocking statistic. Return to that shocking story, shocking statistic. So the conclusion has three parts. 
The conclusion has hook. You got to hook the reader for the conclusion. Then you must address the so what. Why in the big picture of life, why is this conversation even important? Why is this discussion important? Who cares? So what? How does acknowledging your position enhance humanity? How can humans, humanity, be improved by adopting life according to the way you're writing in your essay, according to your thesis? You can address the harms. Well, what will happen to America if we don't? Follow your suggestion that you're writing in this essay. And finally, you leave the reader with a powerful thought, something to ponder. You want to think about ethos, pathos, logos. How, where do you want to target? Do you want to target the reader's heart? Say something to target the reader's heart. That's pathos. Ethos, you want to appeal to right and wrong. Make a statement to appeal to what's right and what's wrong. You want to appeal facts? Leave the writer with facts, logos. But you want to use ethos, pathos, and logos to make your closing argument. That's phase two of the draft. So now you write a clean copy. You're ready to write a second draft. So for your paper, you have a planning sheet, a first draft, and then because you had to add, enhance the intro and the conclusion, you want to write a second draft. Now, on this second draft, before you write, check your paper. Did you use strong verbs? Have you eliminated L-Y words? Did you remove contractions? They make the paper informal. Don't, isn't, can't. Write a, use formal language. How can you use details? Did you paint clear pictures for the reader? Imagery. Is, is, did you use you know vivid detail so the reader can clearly see your point? Syntax. What do those sentences look like? Are they short, long? Did you use a semicolon, compound, complex? Diction. Use some vocabulary words. Choose about five words to improve the vocabulary of your writing. Once you do that, Write a second draft, which will be your clean copy and the final copy. Those are the steps for writing a successful essay.